This is the Zima Cube Pro, a Nash with a i5 10 core CPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM that can be upgraded up to 64 gigs, 6 base for 3.5 or 2.5 inch hard drives, 4 slots for M.2 NVMe SSDs, 2 PCIe slots for various cards, 10 gigabit Ethernet, Thunderbolt 4 and Zima OS operating system. Do you remember the Zima boards and Zima blade? We have created quite a few videos about these mini servers, but basically the Zima Cube is, I wouldn't say the oldest brother because it's newer than these two, but it's the big brother of these two devices. I will leave some links down below just in case you want to check that out. But basically they are designed by the same company, which is ISWELL. One of the options is completely aesthetic. It comes with this black cover, but we can replace. It is magnetic, so we just need to swap. This one here is a bit different. We need to remove, then we just need to fit either the black or brown. So we just need to push it down and that is it. Black or brown according to our test. Now, taking a look at more interesting stuff right over here. So this is the cooler for the 12th generation CPU, the i5. 1235U. It's a 10 core CPU at 4.4. So this is a beast. It also has 16 gigabytes of RAM, but we can upgrade up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. So we have here DDR5 up to 64, which we can just replace the two times eight that comes in. Really interesting as well. It has this SSD with the operating system, 256 gigs, but more interesting perhaps are the PCIe slots that we have here, PCIe 4.0 and 3.0, and we can fit in all these kinds of PCIe slots. So this one here, for example, is populated with two NVMEs, two terabytes each from Sabre. So besides the four SSDs that we will put in inside the NAS unit, and besides this one right over here, we can fit more. For example, I could fit two right over here. Actually, this one takes NVMe, SATA, and M SATA. So I could place in three units right over here, and then plus two units. Is that it needs to be low profile. So in this particular case, this would be fine. This one right over here doesn't have the low profile bracket, so I could fit it in here, or I could fit it in on the lower end PCIe. Any including graphic cards. So if your workflow is really intensive that might be an option if we take a look here at this control this is the 10 gigabit controller connected to this pci right over here and if we take a look at the back we will find two thunderbolt ports so 40 gigabits of bandwidth right over here the 10 gigabit ethernet connection dual 2.5 gig ethernet a display port hdmi and usb 3.0 and then on the other side if we take a look right over here there's also two usb type a 3.0 and one USB type C 3.0, a audio jack, and also a power and off button. We will be able to place in four NVMe SSDs right over here on this really awesome board. And besides that, of course, these six bays that we can place in the 3.5 or 2.5 hard drives. For storage, I placed in six Toshiba N300, eight terabytes each, and it's really easy to place in. We just need to remove the bay. There's only one boring thing, which is we have four screws each bay. So it will take a while and I would prefer to see a system that wouldn't require screws. So although it's a boring task, okay, just once. So six times eight terabytes and 300. And then on the SSD side, there is one slot which is missing right over here. This is the bay that will take up to four SSDs. Now I did place in four Sabrent SSDs, two terabytes each. And honestly, it is a overkill for a device such as this. But as we are going to test out some speeds, then there are no limits. Now to cool down the SSDs and the hard drives, there are two fans that I didn't show you right here on the back that will push the air and will keep all of them 
cool. Finally, we just need to press one of the buttons, actually the only button here at the front, boot up the device and that is it. The Zimo OS operating system will start, we will configure for the first time. It's very similar to Casa OS, actually we have been doing some videos about Casa OS, so I will leave some links down below just in case you want to check that out, but it has a few more features targeted at NAS devices. In fact, both are developed by Icewale and what I did was to create a RAID 5 with the Toshi Shiba N300 so that even if I lose one drive it won't corrupt my files and with the SSDs I did create two individual ones and a RAID 0 which is not worth it but just out of curiosity. Zim OS already had an update which I believe that it's 1.2.5 at this moment but I did record the screen so all good. Now Casa OS and Zima OS alike have a lot of support, a lot of updates not only from Icewell but also from the community so it's awesome. Now if it is the best operating system for a NAS, not really sure. Even if we don't like Zim OS we can install any operating system right over here, True NAS, Proxmox, Unraid, anything that we want. On the next few videos we will dive deeper on Zim OS and besides Zim OS also the hardware. I am curious to test out the Thunderbolt connection, 10 gigabit connection, what speed can we get out of the SSDs and the hard drives and whatnot. All those tests that we usually do with this kind of device. But from the specifications and the link will be down below we can check out that this is not a normal NAS. This is a device that besides doing what we usually do on a NAS device it's also capable of of a lot more like virtual machines with Windows 11, Linux distributions and a lot more. So we will get updated into that. And if you are curious like myself to discover what more we can do with the Zima Cube Pro, stay tuned to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing to the channel and leave that thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Huerta George and as always, I'll see you on the next one.